Advocating for the eradication of HIV AIDS, I go one on one with former DC insider and activist Greg Mathis Jr. about lobbying efforts on Capitol Hill for the 30th anniversary of AIDS Watch. The 30th anniversary of AIDS Watch is coming up in Washington, D.C. It's the oldest and largest constituent-led HIV advocacy event in the nation. This year, Greg Mathis Jr. will lead the AIDS Watch rally in our nation's capital. Greg joins me now to talk about his advocacy work with AIDS Watch, the significance of this rally, and more. Hi, Greg. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, good morning, Tracy. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, well, I, I appreciate the work that you're doing. And I would love to begin by asking you what your background is with HIV AIDS and how you got into this advocacy work. Yeah, I mean, most of it honestly is personal. Um, mm -hmm. I lost my uncle through the complications of HIV and, um, <sighs> you know, but more recently, it's become a passion of mine. You know, I worked on Capitol Hill for 10 years. And so joining AIDS Watch in DC is really important to me because having done that work, I know how many things people that work on Capitol Hill have to deal with the competing priorities. And that if you don't use your voice, if you don't go down there and tell them what's important to you, it'll fall by the wayside. And so AIDS Watch, this conference is an important opportunity for us to go down there and tell them what we need because we are really so close to ending this epidemic once and for all. There are things that we can do to get rid of HIV. And, you know, I think about my uncle when I do this work. I think about my friend, you know, the majority of people impacted by this or, you know, disproportionately impacted by this epidemic are Black males who are gay. And so I think, you know, those factors combined are really why I'm doing this work. And, you know, stepping up publicly is more recent, but I've been really impacted by this my entire life. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm, of course, I'm sorry about uh, all the people mm -hmm. that you've lost to it. Um, I wonder, would you talk a little bit about what some of the aims and the goals are uh, to get, you know, what do you want people to hear about HIV AIDS at this juncture? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, one of the most important things is that we really are on the cusp of ending this epidemic. Right. You know, when we think about focusing on testing, when we think about the focus on prevention and even being able to use new medications that we have to stop transmission in people who are living with HIV, that's important. I mean, that really is the finish line is this far away. And what we need is for our federal officials to step up, our state officials to step up. And this is an opportunity to go and tell them how they can step up and what resources we need to end this epidemic once and for all. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at, uh, you know, like maybe funding for PrEP and uh, yeah. more testing and things like that. <laughs> And really, you know, I think it goes beyond even funding for PrEP because we yeah. really have to focus on that community outreach yes. um, and mm -hmm. educating people that these things exist and that they're safe and that, you know, they're actually, you know, and making sure people have the tools to make educated decisions when you talk about PrEP. Mm -hmm. um, and that starts with community work. We really have to make sure that we're getting that funding so that people who can relate to the patients they're dealing with can educate them on these things. And that's one of the most important things I think that we can do um, in addition to the testing, in addition to the treatment, is really focusing on that community prevention and educating people on what they can do to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And then, you know, kind of not, you know, educating people to protect themselves, but also, you know, something that still remains with HIV AIDS is stigma. Uh, mm -hmm. How, what, what are you going to ask for in terms of hoping to eradicate that? You know, one of the big things that we have been, fo that, you know, that I've been focusing on is HIV decriminalization, because that does go hand in hand with stigma. Um, I told you, you know, my uncle lived with HIV for a number of years and thank God to, you know, advances in medicine. He lived about 20 years with HIV, mm. but, um, his entire, you know, I just remember talking with him and one of his biggest fears was, you know, the legal repercussions that he could be subjected to because of his HIV status. Um, and that's just not right. I don't think anyone with any virus should be treated that way to feel as though they've done something that's criminal. I think that, you know, that adds to the stigma of this entire epidemic that we're dealing with. I think at the end of the day, we got to realize, especially, you know, me, I realize it as a black gay man, it's all around me, you know, it's a flip of a coin that I haven't been impacted personally in terms of having HIV myself. 
but that could be a very real reality. And so I think when we think about stigma, it's, we really have to stop othering people and mm -hmm. realize that, you know, criminalizing something that is, that someone that's happening to someone of no fault of their own, that's not how we want to treat people. And I think that's a big part of the stigma that we deal with is really having those conversations mm -hmm. about, you know, what this virus is, how, you know, what it looks like and how we can really change some of the laws that facilitate HIV stigma. Great, great. Thank you so much for that information. Mm -hmm. And I want to look to the rally that's coming up. And what does that day look like? It's going to be a fun day. You know, it's going to be a lot of walking, a lot of door knocking, a, mm -hmm. a lot of door knocking. Um, mm -hmm. If you've been to Washington, D.C. before, which I'm sure you have, but, but for folks watching, Capitol Hill is an enormous place. So I'm excited because we're going to start with a big rally in the morning. But most importantly, after that rally, we're going to be going to our state legislators, our, you know, door to door, educating them, advocating for these important issues that we talked about earlier and that we're going to talk about after this. But, um, you know, that's what the day is going to look like. It's really getting people motivated, educating them on how to use their voice, how, what to ask for, how to ask for it, and then empowering them to go door to door to their own representatives and talk about the resources that we need to end this epidemic. Great. Well, you know, I, I want to keep it hopeful because I love the idea that it's so close to the end, but there's also this huge history with HIV AIDS and mm -hmm. the Reagan administration ignored it uh, in, because of who it affected. Uh, mm -hmm. people, black people, uh, you know, all of that. And so when you are approaching conservative lawmakers, how do you, how do you take that on? What is, what is your... <laughs> How do you begin the discussion with these people who just yeah. don't get it? So this is where I do rely a lot on my old political skills because you can't talk to them, to your point, the same way you would talk to people who are already on our side. Yes. Um, with me, it's about, make you know, I found it best that when you approach some of the more conservative lawmakers, you got to make it a financial argument, which is this is costing us money, plain and simple. <laughs> we have people who are right. sick, who are putting pressure on the healthcare mm -hmm. system. It's like we could really eradicate a virus that's costing us a tremendous amount of money within our healthcare system. If we dedicate the resources up front, we don't have to pay for the treatment. We don't have to pay for the things that come on the back end. And that's been my approach when talking to people who can't really understand the human element of it. Mm -hmm. You got to hit them with the financial element because you're right. It is disproportionately impacting people who they might not speak to, who they might not um I hate to say value, but maybe don't represent those don't, you know, those, the people who are impacted by this virus aren't necessarily their constituents. They aren't the people they represent. So they don't have a human reason to fight for this issue. And so I found it that, you know, when something's disproportionately affecting people of color or marginalized communities, it's easier to make that financial case, which there is here, that if we end this epidemic, we're saving money for our entire country by not having to treat people who are sick on the back end. Yeah. There, that's that's a good strategy. It's sad that you have to use that, but mm -hmm. uh, but it's a good strategy. And I, finally, Greg, I just wanted to ask, how can people get involved with AIDS Watch, and what can they do to support your cause and your work? Yeah, they um. So I don't know the website offhand. I, I well, don't yes. want. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> but I would say, I mean, there there are a, a tremendous amount of online resources, both with AIDS Watch, with AIDS United. I'll also be sharing things on my social media. If you want to check me out, Greg Mathis Jr., I have mm -hmm. a number of resources down my page um, about this issue. And I really would encourage people to get involved. Um, it's a, you know, we are so close to ending this and we've come such a long way. I think it's, you know, we can't, I can't underscore enough the fact that HIV is no longer a death, a death sentence. And not only is it no longer a death sentence in this country, we have a chance to get rid of it once and for all. And I really hope that, that you know, that motivates folks to get involved, to educate themselves and start talking to other people as well. Wonderful. Well, Greg Mathis Jr., thank you so much for your work and for your time here today. For The Advocate Channel, I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. Thanks again to Greg Mathis Jr. for stopping by. The advocacy work he is doing for HIV AIDS is critical. The 30th annual AIDS Watch takes place March 21st in Washington, DC. Visit AIDSUnited.org for more information and for more coverage that advocates for all, open the Advocate channel wherever you stream. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and I'll see you next time.